Welcome guys, welcome to this week's Q&A. Thank you to everybody that sent in questions. I really, really love doing these Q&As, so make sure you hit that thumbs up if you tune into these every week. And just a heads up, I am filming with my new camera lens. As you guys might know, I broke my last one, so this one is actually a, um, like a, an up close lens and I'm waiting for the other one to come in. So I'm having to stand like really far back, but the zoom on it is incredible. So hopefully the quality is a little bit better. Let's get to the first question. I struggle with lack of motivation during a cut. I know I have to be more strict with macros to lose weight. It's not for a competition or anything, so I feel like I am more lax with this cut than if I had a specific date I was shooting for. Any recommendations to kick my butt back into gear? Motivation's a funny thing because it's so fleeting. It's not something that's going to stay around all of the time, and that's okay. So whenever you're in this fitness journey and aiming to be healthy and fit and practice a fit lifestyle, typically what is going to help the most is that consistency and building those habit. So it becomes a habit that you are on point with your macros. It becomes a habit that you're in the gym as much as you need to be. Whenever motivation does wane, it helps so much to have some sort of goal to shoot for. So you know, all right, I really don't want to get this workout in, but I know that I have this going on on this date. If you don't want to do a show, which I don't necessarily recommend, then I would recommend aiming for some type of event. So if maybe you want to run a 5K or if you want to run one of those obstacle races, if you want to go as so far, you can aim for a photo shoot. So you can schedule yourself some type of fitness or lifestyle photo shoot. Something to really, really work your butt off for. Help commemorate all of the hard work that you've been putting in. Now those are a little bit, the photo shoot itself is a little bit more extreme. I know not everybody wants to go and do some kind of photo shoot because what are you going to do with the pictures? I said shooting for some type of uh, physical event is going to be really, really good because you're going to focus more on performance than ever. So like I said, 5Ks if you like running. Obstacle races are really, really cool. We're actually doing one in May here in Texas. I don't know if you like to lift, but powerlifting could be a good uh, thing to shoot for. But then also just know that it's for your health. 10 years down the road, you're gonna be thankful that you stuck with this. So there are some days that you can't really muster up the motivation, but just know that if you're going about this in a healthy way, you will be thankful that you did. Sometimes you just have to put those blinders on and power through. I hope that helps. I know it's not like a set in stone answer, but motivation is again, something that can be so wishy-washy, but if you're setting in those habits and you're making that priority to focus on your health and staying active and fueling your body well, it'll be easier and easier to get over these little bumps in the road. How did you start getting into lifting? I have two videos. There's part one and part two of my whole fitness journey. I'm going to link it below for you guys. I talk about when I started working out or exercising, when I started dieting, and when I got into lifting. But I think it was 2012, I want to say, um, that I got my first trainer and I started actually lifting weights. And that's whenever I really, really started looking into lifting and seeing how heavy weight training can change my body more than anything I had ever tried before. I'm just waiting for Matt at his office. He's on the phone. We're just waiting. This is a long one, guys. In order to build muscle, you have to be in a caloric surplus. But is it more important to be in a surplus every day or is it enough if your overall caloric intake at the end of the week surpasses your caloric expenditure? For example, is it okay when I eat at my maintenance level on the weekdays and over my maintenance at the weekend, or would this approach rather lead to fat gain than muscle gain? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> I like to eat. <laughs> what do you want from me? Why am I answering Nothing. this? Nothing. Nothing. So. <laughs> this kind of is where flexible dieting can get even more flexible. If you don't have like super, super specific goals like show prep, I would recommend if it works for you to have more maintenance calories on the weekdays and then go 
slightly higher on weekends, that's fine. As long as your weekly intake is where it needs to be. I've seen people change it to where they have like a weekly intake of carbs so they have like I don't know what your weekly carbs would be say like a thousand carbs in a week you can divvy that up throughout the week as as you see fit I would say that that would be a good way to go about things as well if you were doing something like a prep like a competition prep it might not be as beneficial um, I don't know if your body would respond as optimally to that but um, I think that that could be a very good way to go about it especially if you struggle to eat enough on the week weekdays but the weekends you you like to eat more. I've done that too where I have refeeds, higher intake days on the weekend. So yeah, I think that that would be a, a cool idea, especially if you can keep up with that long term. This one involves you. What's the first place that you guys want to travel to? Where do you want to go first? Here's what we're gonna do. Here's the thing. I want to meet an apple. We're gonna get the, the trailer. I can wait. No, you can't. No, you can't wait. You gotta hear this. Okay. So Saturday, we're getting the trailer. Which would be tomorrow when you guys are watching this. Don't scream at me. Tomorrow. <laughs> and then uh, what we're gonna do from there is, I'm gonna bring it back here, you know, just get real nervous, you know, not, I've never done this before kind of thing, so it's gonna be fun, just kind of, and then we're gonna bring it back here, figure it out for the next couple of months, probably two months or so. And then from there, we're gonna take it to maybe the coast. You wanna go to the coast? Sure. Uh, we haven't really talked about this yet. And so just a small trip, three hours away, uh, plenty of camping, all kinds of stuff down there. And then uh, that'll be our first trip, and then we'll come back here, regroup a little bit, maybe do a, a trip somewhere less cool, like San Antonio, which we're not a huge, I mean, we'd like it. <sighs> but I need to do it for work, which is okay. what we're doing. It, this I just, is not just for us, this is also for work as well. I just don't know enough about San Antonio to have an opinion on it's it. It's cool. The only time that I did go to San Antonio, the traffic was always bad, and I always got lost. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you and everywhere. That's my, my input on San Antonio. If you guys know San Antonio, if there's anything cool in the area, if y'all know of any cool RV parks that we should stay at, Or like, who knows, a, a vegan fast food place. Maybe there's one there. Well, we know about Earth So after the coast, my first vote is going to be Colorado. I was thinking Colorado or California. Yes. Colorado or California. So if you guys are in Colorado, California, comment below and let us know where. And if there's any cool things that we should go and find and get into. Do you have any advice on digestive health? I'm always very bloated even though I eat a predominantly whole foods diet and can't figure it out. I eat about 40 grams of fiber a day and drink lots of water. Bloating and digestion is a tricky, tricky thing. It's so different from person to person. My first question would be when did you start experiencing the bloating and the digestive issues. Was there a big change in your diet whenever this started? It's important to kind of make note of when that started. So, for example, I had a little while whenever I was uh, going through the process of getting my period back that I was eating all whole foods, but I was eating a lot of fruit and I think a lot of fruit sugars. I was very bloated all the time. I was very bloated all the time. And I lowered my intake of fruit and my bloating went away. I don't know if that's a common thing, but I guess my body just doesn't like that amount of fruit per day. Now I eat like four or five servings of fruit a day and I'm fine, but I think it was whenever I was pushing like eight servings a day that I probably, my, my body just wasn't reacting well. So make note of when the changes started and it's also helpful to keep a food journal. So write down how you're feeling. If you do notice that you're starting to feel more bloated than usual, write down what you ate and see if there's any trends or any similarities that you can find to see if there might be a certain food that's causing it or if it's a certain eating pattern that's causing it. And it could also be that you're intolerant of some type of food. There, there are people that are intolerant to some random foods and they don't know but it could be the cause of your bloating so if it's something that persists and you can't pinpoint it using food journaling and making note of, of dietary changes then I would recommend going to a specialist and maybe getting tested to see if you're allergic to anything <laughs> it's like really dramatic looking that's just me eating your vitamins <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Dun 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 I can't see your hand. There you go. Dun 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 But I did film Brady and he's really really cute up close. 
No, but you're too close, too close, too close. Fight over the burger.